So in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, construct a uh, four element 2.4 gigahertz Celtic knot antenna. So as I said in the previous video I've been working on this design for quite a few months and uh, what I'm going to show you now is how to construct a four element Celtic knot antenna for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and uh, basically the methods are the same as the previous video but um, it's just a little bit bigger. So to make the antenna for the 2.4 GHz spectrum, the method is identical to the previous video for the 5.8 GHz, which is why for this video I'm actually going to make a 4 element antenna as opposed to a 3 element antenna for the 5.8 GHz because the method is identical, but obviously the measurements are a little bit different and we're going to measure off some lengths of copper wire at one full wavelength at 2.4 which is um, 124 millimeters long so again we're going to use a straw for most of the measurements so we can get it all nice and accurate and another difference with uh, this antenna I'm going to use slightly thicker wire than I use for the 5.8 this uh, wire is actually 18 SWG so slightly thicker than uh, the 5.8 gigahertz because I find using this thicker wire for the 5.8 it's really hard to get those turns in because it's so small but uh, we can use a little bit thicker for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz so it's a little bit more robust and of course the only difference with using thicker wire for antennas is it increases the bandwidth and especially if you're flying FPV sometimes you don't really want that I've seen some videos where people make some uh, really thick wire um, helical antennas which again if you've got uh, a lot of people around you using similar frequencies it can cause it a lot of interference so you know don't want to go too thick I want to try and keep it at that center frequency that we want so I've got my four lengths of wire all cut off and I've actually prepared the ends I've got rid of that varnish so we can solder onto that and uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, put a right handle bend here on both the ends just like in the previous uh, antenna video but this time it's one eighth wavelength long for the 2.4 gigahertz which is 15.5 millimeters so I'm going to put the bends on each one of these elements and again it's just a lot easier using the straw instead of measuring off each individual bend So to put the round bends in these elements, what you want to find is something cylindrical that is uh, around 30 millimeters in diameter. And uh, I've got this here. This is a 22 millimeter socket, which is exactly 30 millimeters diameter across there. But uh, that, you know, you don't have to be exact with that. If you find something that's 28 millimeters, then you know that'll work out just fine. But uh, a 22 millimeter socket socket is uh, just the perfect diameter. And again, I'm starting with uh, the left hand side the joint actually pointing upwards and the right hand one pointing down and do that with all the elements so you get them all the same and everything's uniform. And again, bend it round, take your time, and get that bend nice and straight. So you've got it looking like that. And also with this, you can actually uh, roll it a little bit like a rolling pin to get that curve really, really straight. So you want to do that with uh, the other three. So once you've got them bent into this shape, what you're going to need to do now is find another cylinder um, type object that's 20 millimeters in diameter. I'm uh, using this 70 millimeter socket bit, which is uh, near enough to 20 millimeters in diameter. And I'm going to bend it uh, around this next, but uh, this leg here, I want this leg to come across over the top of this leg. So this one's going to go under, and this one's going to go over. So again, gently just bending it round. I'm going to pass that one underneath that one, and then just use my fingers to get it bent round there so it's nice and straight. It's a nice straight curve. 
and again what we can do because this is uh, metal we can actually roll it a little bit get any kinks out and then once you've got it looking like that what you want to do is a flat surface like this and I want to bend that leg in that direction so like that and then flip it over and do the same with the other one so we've actually got that kind of shape now and I want to do that with uh, the other three so I'm getting ready to solder these on now and one last thing that you actually want to do to these before you actually solder it in place is bend these in a little bit so they're actually touching each other at the tip so it uh, makes like a, a V shape just like that and uh, again just like in the uh, 5.8 gigahertz one we're going to solder the bottom leg on first and then uh, just leave the top one and once we've got all the bottom legs of the element soldered on then we'll arrange the top part and solder it all in one go and also this gap here that I've uh, left on the coax is exactly 15 millimeters and that's the gap you want between these uh, actual two legs um, you need to keep it at 15 millimeters otherwise uh, you'll knock the SWR out of phase and it won't perform as well as it should so that's really important that 15 millimeters gap so I'm going to go ahead and solder all these bottom legs on now and then the top ones of course and all I'm doing with this gap is just you just eyeball it just to uh, pinch it out and then we can uh, actually get it uh, spot on when we come to solder the top part but for now we'll solder all the bottom legs on so yeah that's the antenna virtually finished off I've just gone round as soon as I soldered up the uh, top element here the legs there just go around and make sure it, everything's all nice and even and uh, spaced out properly underneath here and here because uh, that's really really important and uh, yeah all nice and uniform something else that I uh, also like to do with these is to make them really strong is uh, get some of this epoxy putty and just uh, mold it around the um, joints here at the top and the joints here at the bottom to make it really really strong you could also use hot glue as well but this epoxy putty is really strong stuff